Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today we're going to take a look at the Cherry MX Board 1.0, the king of keyboards. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so on today's video, we're going to be taking a look at this. This is the Cherry MX Board 1.0. This is a keyboard from the basically the king of keyboard manufacturers, Cherry. Now, obviously, this is a Cherry keyboard made by Cherry with Cherry switches. It's Cherry through and through. So, realistically, am I going to be able to say anything bad about it? Well, let's find out. So, what do we get inside the box? So, first of all, inside the box, you obviously you get the keyboard itself. Now, this is a full-size keyboard. You can get a 10 keyless if you wanted to as well, but today we're going to be taking a look at the full-size version. So, as you can see, this is the backlit version as well. It's a single color backlight, so we don't have all that RGB stuff going on. So this is going to be perfect for kind of office use, home environments, home office, that kind of thing. Um, and for people that just don't really want all that flashy bling, but they do want the tactile feeling of a Cherry MX brand switch in their keyboard. Now you can actually get this in a couple of variations. There's actually 12 models for the EU regions, and that covers all the different keyboard setups. There's two main options, which is the Cherry MX brand, which is the more tactile, and the Cherry MX Red, which is the, the more silent switch with a, a lower resistance force. So you can choose either one of those SKUs, uh, again, depending on which areas you're in. For me, this is the brown one. I actually prefer the brown switches, although some would say when I'm doing live streams and things like that, then the, the reds might be more beneficial being a bit quieter. But for me, I quite like the brown switches. So as you can see at the moment, the keyboard is actually backlit. You can adjust the backlight accordingly. So if you want to, you can actually turn the backlight off now you've got a function button down here, which just press and hold, and then you can press on the respective button. So F9 on this particular one turns off the lights. If you want to turn them back on, you can do that and press it again. You've got varying degrees of brightness. So there's actually four brightness buttons. So if you press function and press F8, this will take you all the way up to the kind of almost eye retina burning levels of brightness for the white. Uh, you can take it back down again using the F7, and that takes it down in quite big steps. But if you want to go up in a slightly more refined or there's a slight level that you're just finding a little bit too bright or a little bit too dark, kind of like the Goldilocks moment, then you can use F5 or F6 and you can gently go down through the power levels, just press and hold it and it will cycle through. So you can go down or up in much lesser gradients. Also on the function control keys, you've got your media control at the top here. So you've got your mute, volume down and volume up. Further along, you've also got things like your uh, print screen, your brake button, which people generally tend, don't tend to use. You've also got some media keys along the top here. So you've got your rewind, play, pause, and fast forward. And also at the top, you've got an extra key, which is your Windows lockout key. So if you are going to be using this for gaming, or maybe you're in spreadsheets or databases, and you don't want to accidentally press the Windows key and do something disastrous, then you can press the cherry key. And as you can see now, the Windows key has come back on. Now, one thing I've noticed when the function keys are actually on, they are slightly brighter than the rest of the keys. Uh, if you've actually got it set to the off position, they still illuminate so you know if they're actually working. So number lock, caps lock, and scroll lock, those all light up. So those stay on regardless. So even if you've got the RGB, or, sorry, the LEDs turned off, these will still come on. So we'll get rid of those. Actually, you can't get rid of the Windows one, can you? So I have to press that. So there we go, press that, and that's the Windows button locked out press that and it's active again. So you get the general idea. It's a really, really nice keyboard. Now the actual keycaps themselves are uh, double shot keycaps, laser etched. So again, total quality. And you can actually get what they call a performance upgrade kit for the keys. So you get the uh, WASD keys and a couple of others, arrow keys, etc., which are modified and slightly different uh, keycaps to give you that slight gaming edge. Although this keyboard is not designed for gamers especially, and it's not limiting gamers. So if you want to use it for gaming, you can do. If you're one of those people in an office environment and maybe you play a few games on, on the work PC after hours or during your lunch break, then this is the sort of upgrade that you're going to be looking at. Now, talking of prices for upgrading, at the moment in the UK, this retails anywhere from £55 to around about £80, depending where you shop. So obviously it is going to pay to look around. I will put some links in the description below and hopefully it'll be some of the cheapest ones at the moment, but again, do shop around and you can probably snag yourself a bargain. Now, a mechanical keyboard with Cherry MX switches 
for around about £55 from the actual originators of the Switch themselves. Good quality stuff, made in Germany. This thing is going to be bulletproof. It's, uh, the keys, they rate as something like crazy, like 50 million keystrokes before they're uh, potentially going to fail. So this is the utmost of quality German engineering at its totally finest. Anyway, I'm getting slightly off track. I didn't go through what is actually in the box when you get it out. So you get your manual, which actually was really helpful this time. I actually read the manual just so I knew about how the function lockout worked and all those kinds of things. So uh, definitely worth having a look in there if there's anything you need to know. There is actually a firmware on the keyboard, which is upgradable if you wanted to. So um, if that's something that floats your boat, then you're more than welcome to do that. They do say if you want to get the firmware, you can go to cherry.com uh, or wherever it is, and you can get the links for it and download it and upgrade the firmware should it be necessary. Uh, also in the box, you get these rubber feet. Now the keyboard itself actually, because this is designed really, I suppose, for typists or people who are on the, on the keyboard kind of a lot, they've designed it so you can make it as kind of ergonomic as you possibly can. So with the feet on the bottom, at the moment I've got them raised. So with the keys folded down, or sorry, I say keys because the, the click of the feet actually sounds like one of the switches like amplified. Maybe it's just me, I don't know. But anyway, in the flat position, you've got a really nice type and angle. Uh, for some people, they prefer it to completely flat. If you don't want it completely flat, even if it is flat, it's actually, it does stick to the desk pretty well. Not a great deal of movement there. But what you can do is they actually supply these rubberized feet. They're quite thick pads actually. So you can stick those on the bottom and then that will raise up a little bit further. If that isn't quite enough for you, then what you can do is you can flick out the rubberized feet and then that will give you the, the highest section. Again, it's not overly high. I actually find it quite a shallow depth on that. Um, some keyboards, I've got quite an angle to them, which I actually find very uncomfortable. This feels very natural, very tactile. And I did some typing tests earlier and actually it feels really good, really natural. The keys are really well spaced. As you'd expect, it's a Cherry keyboard. Cherry don't make a bad keyboard as far as I could tell. I've never seen one in all the years I've used a keyboard from like the mid eighties when going through like really old IBM PCs and stuff like that. Never have I had a Cherry keyboard, which I actually disliked. And hopefully you will uh, find exactly the same as well if you decide to go and get one of these. Uh, also in a box, we get a wrist rest as well. So if the, uh, the angle is still a little bit too much for you, you can use the wrist rest. Now the wrist rest has got the MX branding stamped on there. Um, unfortunately, the Cherry logo, which is here at the bottom, which is really nice to see, when you have got the wrist rest attached, it actually does cover that up. So that just clicks into place and then you're good to go. And it's actually, when that's actually on there, that is a really, really comfortable angle to type with. So again, if you're one of those people that is typing all the time or you're doing data entry or whatever it is, this is gonna be so, so comfortable. Um, the only downside I can see at the moment with this is the actual, the keyboard itself and the keycaps. There's a kind of satin matte finish to them. So if you're one of those people that is eating at your desk and you've got your kind of greasy sandwich or your crisps or whatever, the grease is gonna transfer onto these keys quite quickly. Now they are laser cut, so you don't have to worry too much. You can clean them with a soft cloth and they'll come up looking like new. I've already done that today and they look absolutely fine. Uh, they basically look like brand new, even though I've been kind of getting Dorito dust all over and that kind of stuff. It looks absolutely fine. So uh, nice and easy to clean and you can remove all the keys if you need to. So you can pull those off, get a vacuum in there. Again, we'll take a look at our nice brown uh, cherry switches. The LEDs, like I said, are super bright. So if I turn this light back on, and turn the light right up to the highest brightness. Now, considering there's studio lights in here at the moment, that is still very, very bright. In actual fact, I can see the reflection of that light in the camera lens at the moment, almost blinding me. It's very, very bright. So anyway, there you go. That is pretty much it. There's not much more I can say, apart from it's a really nice keyboard. It's got fantastic switches. It is exceptionally well built. Um, it withstands dirt, grease, and is easy to keep clean. One thing I didn't mention actually, which is completely really off topic, but is a nice feature. The actual USB cable, uh, it's a two meter USB cable for those who are interested, but the actual USB cable on the end actually has an illuminated cherry logo, which uh, I'll try and get some B-roll of so you can see that, but I thought that was just a really nice touch. On the USB cable, the sort of thing that people are never gonna see, just that little cherry logo, which lights up the same color as the keyboard, which I thought was, uh, Nice touch. So anyway, this has been the Cherry MX Board 1.0. Uh, 
I'm really pleased with it. Hopefully you will be too. If you want links, I'll be in the video description. If you've got any comments, leave them in the section below. But in the meantime, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.